And to Alicia, you should uh, share your screen and so we can see your account. And I made you a, a uh, what do you call it? Yeah, 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 we see it. You see it, bro, Fox? Yes, yes, sir, I see it. Okay. So what do I need to do? What's your earliest option? The April? You got an April option? Oh boy. Um Is this your account or is this your group account? This is our group account. Ooh. How I don't even remember. Well, let me see. Maybe I need to pull up the Google Doc to see. I, I can see it. It's a little like he, your early option is May. Oh, I can look at the date. Yeah, I think the earliest is May. I got to move to a slightly cooler location, so give me a, give me a second. You guys go right ahead. Yeah. May 14th is VZ. And this Hold RIG. Right back, That's the... And this Lynn, that's the earliest. Okay. <clears throat> so we may even see if we're, if we're a fox can move, we roll over in May. It'd be the same just for the purpose of this, the, the, um, purpose of, uh, yeah, I think when we started as a group, we were, I think we was after the third week in. Go to your position window. What you what you say? Go to your positions window. Account positions. Okay, I'm back. Brother Fox, they earlier since May. Is that can you still do that for the sake of demonstration? Yes, you can okay. do any any option for the sake of demonstration. <clears throat> we'll just note the caveats, and that'll be fine. Long day. Okay. I know, bro. If I appreciate you able to get at, get get you know get in there uh, right now with your long day too, fam. I appreciate that, fam. You know, I I didn't want to miss this opportunity to do this. I think I was supposed to do it last week, but then it got canceled or something. So we don't. We our earliest option is like June or July. So when I was talking to Brother Brian and Mike, I think one of the two said they had an April. And that's why, well, then I think it was Mike then, but we could just do the May. I, I guess. It, it, really, it, it really doesn't matter. The, the rule is this. You never want to enter the month that you're holding that option. So let's say you have a, what is this, March? Let's say you have a, um, an April option. And by the way, I'm hearing somebody's echo of me. So, I don't know. Somebody's not using a headset or something, but... I wasn't. Let me put on my headset. Go ahead, though. That's me, okay. too, Brother Fox. And I don't... I thought we were going to yeah. be able to call in. I don't have a headset. Well, if you're on a cell phone, that's fine. But if you're used to listening to your computer, everything that I'm saying, I'm hearing it repeated. Um... If you're on a headset, I mean, if you're on a uh, cell phone, that's fine. No, because there's no number to call in. I think. Sure, well, I can tell you what the number is. Hold on a second. I'll tell you what, it says it all right here in the meeting ID. Click on that link that says meeting ID, not the arrow, the word meeting, meeting info, it says. Meeting. Right next to that arrow you were clicking on, go back to the arrow you were clicking on. I just left of that. Click on that link. Yes, right there. It gives you the phone and number and everything. He said he got rid of the phone number because it was eight dollars a. a I, I didn't give it up. I didn't get rid of it. They they canceled it. They just said I it expired. Now I have to pay for it. Oh okay. All right. No problem. So I just didn't. I don't use it enough to pay for it. All right. Um. All right. So. I'm still hearing the echo. So what I was saying is, if, uh, let me take my headset out of my ear when I talk. Hold on a second. Well, so what I'm saying is, if you have an, uh, an option that expires the third Friday in April, let's say, so it's an April option, April 2014 option, you should not let that option 
uh, you should not hold that option into uh, past the third Friday of March. Because after right. the third Friday of March, then that is officially the month of April. So if you have an option that expires in April, you need to be doing something with that option come the third Friday in March, the month before. So um, that, that applies for any option that you own. You should be either rolling it up or rolling it over or selling it or something, you know, closing out that trade, whatever you have to do. Um, what's appropriate for that option, you just do it for that option. Okay. All okay. right. So what, this is a question on rolling options, right? Right, and how to roll options, too. So we, okay. we use... So, so I'm going I'm to make it really, really simple. When they give you that option, um, like a, a, you see at the end of the line on the right-hand side of the page, they have that last column, and it says trade, roll, ch uh, chain. I don't use any of that stuff. What I do is if I have a, percent, a red percent sign after that option at the, on the left-hand side, then I go to the um, – and I, I actually have my system programmed this way. I go to uh, that trade in the, uh, what is it called? Scroll up to the top of your screen so I can see what it's called. Okay, all the way to the top. Oh, yeah, so under, tra under the trade menu, right now you're on the account menu, under the green trade menu, just click on that. That's account. Go over to the, to the right-hand side of your screen. And just click on the word trade to the right of that word account. Yeah, right there. So I go to the order status window. That's what it's called. And I, let's say we have, um, I don't know which option we're talking about, but let's just say it's a, um, you know which option it is. So click on order status and um, let's go to the option you want to trade that you want to roll over. Okay, so that's it there, the May, uh, the May 14 uh, uh, rig um, 46 put option that you bought. Okay, so you have a, this is a sell order, I assume, it's still open. You have a sell order to sell this at a $4.25 stop. Um, yeah, right there. So you have a sell order to sell this at a stop at $4.25. Right now, the option is trading for $6.45 by $6.70, it's a 35 cent spread. Not that big of a deal. Um, so um, what I would do is I would go to the extreme right and click on modify. So let's say it's time to, to, to roll this option. I would click on modify. And I would change this from a stop order, which is price stop, right? Um, come back over to the right, go back up a little bit, come down a little bit, go to the left, go up a little bit, which says price stop. Yeah, right there. Click on, go, go back over to the word, uh, to the arrow there and click on stop. Yep, and make it a market order. Okay, so this is a market order to sell it, um, and you want to get rid of this contingent on price. Get rid of that advanced order. Just hit the minus key or something and get rid of it. Okay, so you want to sell this at the market price, which you would, you would sell it and you would get $6.45 for it. Um, that would be the market order. You're going to write down on a piece of paper that you sold the... Uh, I guess it was the May 46 put at $6.45. And I don't know how many contracts you have. Um, 29 contracts. Okay. So you're going to sell. This is to roll it over. You're going to sell the, uh, the May 14 46 strike put for $6.45. And then depending on why you're selling this, maybe you're selling this because it's about to expire then you're just going to find the June or the July or the August or the December 
2014 May uh, 2014 46 strike put, and you're going to buy that same put for around six dollars and forty five cents. Pretty simple. You're going to sell one. You're going to buy the exact same option in a later month for the exact price or close to the exact price. It's close I to have a question. the exact price. Yes, sir. Now, bro, if, 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 when you do that, it's, it's going to be over your, your risk amount. So, so how do we factor that in? It's going to be over your risk amount. I don't understand what you mean by risk amount. How much are you When we your, did it before, uh, when, 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 we, when we did it before, yeah, your I mean, point your five, five in. in. When we did it, yeah, yes, sir. But that's, that's old. You know, that's not important right now because right now you have profits. Theoretically, you have an option that's worth more than you bought it for. You bought it okay. back in January, and you bought it for maybe four dollars and change, and now it's worth six dollars and change. So now you have maybe twenty thousand dollars in profit on this option. You know, four, yes, four or five months later, you're basically saying, "I'm taking my profit, and I'm moving it from this option that's about to expire to another option that has more time before it expires." It's not yes, a matter sir. of twenty-five in. This is, not, this is not you saying, I'm going to start a totally new trade, and I'm only going to use 0.5 in of my account size. This is you saying, I used 0.5 in of my account size back in January, and now I have still that 0.5 in of my account size, and I have another $20,000 in profit. And I'm going to move all of that to a later option. That's all you're doing. Now, there's a second way you're going to change or roll options. And that is if you need to pull some of the money out because you've reached your 10% profit benchmark or you reach your 30% profit benchmark or you reach your 60% profit benchmark or you reach your 120% profit benchmark or you've reached any of the intermediate trailing stocks, you need to buy more shares or more options. And what you would do then is you would um, – do the same thing, except you would move up from the 46 strike to maybe the 50 strike. You would move up to whatever it took to get the amount of money you need to squeeze out of that profit to buy the more options that you have to buy. So let's say we're dealing with a million dollar account size and that this is the 10% profit benchmark and you've got to buy 0.25 in of more options or the equivalent of more options in stock, and then the equivalent of more options. Let's say that's 500 shares of stock or the equivalent of five contracts of options. The five contracts of options mean that you have to spend $5,000 of your money, your profit that you made at this 10% profit benchmark, on buying more options. If that's the case, then you're going to take this May 14th option and if there's still plenty of time left, maybe it's still February, not, not March or April, maybe it's not the third Friday of April, maybe it's the third Friday in February, you're going to take this May. Go ahead and mute yourself, brother. I'm hearing myself echoed again. Thanks, man. Um, you're going to take this uh, May option that's at the 46 strike, and you're going to move it up to whatever strike you need to, maybe the 50 strike. Maybe the, 50, maybe the 50, 56 strike, whatever the strike is, that's going to allow you to pull out capital out of your profit to go and buy those other options at a later month. You understand what I'm saying? You're at the 10% profit benchmark. Now you have removed uh, 0.25 in of the risk, and you have profit at the 10% profit benchmark. And that profit, you've calculated uh, the profit to be more than 0.25 in of your account size. And you have to now go buy $2,500 worth of, new, of worth of more options. Where are you going to get that money from? You're going to get it from the profit at the 10% profit benchmark. And that profit is in options, right? So you're going you're gonna to take the May 14, 46 strike put options. And instead, you're going to buy, and these are puts, so you're going to buy the 40 strike, or you're going to buy the 36 strike. And because these are puts, we're going down, not up. So you're going to buy a lower strike, which is going to be more in the money. Maybe it's May. Maybe it's the May 
uh, 36 strike or Mr. May 40 strike. And that's going to allow you to put out, pull out some of that cash to go ahead and buy the other options you are going to buy, you're going to need to buy. You still have the same quantity of, of options, still 29 uh, uh, lots or contracts. Um, it's just at a different strike that allows you to pull out some of that cash. So for instance, bring back up that screen you just had, and let's take a look at how we can price this. Let's go to this particular... Brother Five. Uh, Brother, Five. Yes, uh, yes, Brother Michael says that we have pay one of our PAY. It has reached the 10% profit benchmark. Is, can we use that as an example? Yeah, and you can use any option you want. That's fine. Take me to that option. Let's, let's look at that on a position, your positions uh, page. So account position, show me the option. I was just going to say, let's do an example so we can, we can see how this works. I'm, I got to try and find something to drink here. Give me a second here. My, my throat is cramping up again. Uh, let's see, I think there's just water. I got all these vegetables and fruits here. I got guanabana, but nobody here to juice it for me. So if I turn the juicer on right now, it's going to make a lot of noise. And it's going to get pretty messy. So I'll just do some water. Okay. Okay, I got water. All right, I am back. Show me the option. Pay. July 14, uh, 27 strike. Okay, so uh, how much profit do you have here? You got $12,480 in profit. All right, what is 0.25 in of your account size? Twelve thousand five hundred. Point two five then is twelve thousand five hundred dollars. Should be sixty two fifty. He said quarter. Oh, uh, he said quarter. Yeah. <laughs> okay. yes, he kicking me under right. the table. On the, he said sixty two fifty. I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So let's go back to that page. And let's um, go to the top of your screen. Uh, let me write down what you have here. You have pay, July 14, 27 strike call. All right, so, and you got it at, um, looks like you bought it at $3.80. It's worth $7.70. And it's up uh, $1.20 today. One moment, Brother yeah. Fox. Give me one second. Let me, give me yes, one second. Let me, hold on. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Banana, actual banana. <laughs> you got fruit basket over there. Uh, you know, I'm here in the kitchen. For some reason, it's always cooler in the kitchen than in my office. And um, there's nobody here but me right now. So, the only if there's somebody here, they're in the kitchen cooking. So, I'd be in their way. It would be just too noisy to do any classes. But the breeze that comes from the ocean is here my office is on the other side of the condo because the salt air ruins my computer so i'm like on a total opposite and there's no breeze on i'm side. ready yes ma'am all right so let's write down this information bring that screen back up let's write down this options information the symbol is pay it's july 14 strike uh, uh expiration it's a 27 strike it's a call and you bought it for three dollars and eighty cents. It's now worth seven dollars and seventy cents. That's all we really need to know. And your point two five in. Looks like you've made approximately one in in profit, which is your or your rather your point five in in profit. All right, so let's go to the top of the screen once you've got that written down. And there's a pricer somewhere here. That I think will help us a lot. Um, I'm not sure where they, where they tuck it nowadays. Um, just highlight the first menu, the account menu. Um, no, not there. Go to trade. Mm. 
No, not there either. Where are you oh, living I'm for, Brother Smart? It's, it's on the main window, not the virtual window. It's on the main um, the window you go to first to log in. Go there first. So don't, don't close this out. Just open up your other, um, what is this called? Options Express window. The one, the first one you come to before you go to the virtual account. Like when you first log in, I'm sorry if you hear me chewing. Okay, you logged in? Great. Under toolbox, I think it's under toolbox. There should be something called pricer. Pricer, there it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, great. So this helps us price options. And we can figure out exactly what something is going to cost uh, to buy or to sell it, basically. Comes in very handy. All right, so put in the symbol there at the top, P-A-Y. Now, this is going to get a little complicated, maybe a little details, but um, we're making a video, right? So you should be able to review this when you guys get a free moment. Uh, so you put in pay, put in the... Um, yeah, near the near the money is good in terms of range. Uh, pull that pull that down. Let me see what else it says besides near the money. Let's choose all. Let's just choose all so we don't have to do this twice. And then um, type it says pricer. Choose out. Let's see what it says on the uh, besides pricer. Yeah, just let's, let's just say calls. Mhm. Mm and your contract is what, April contract? It's a July it's a, contract. It's a July. Oh, it's a July. Okay. 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 July. So let's go to a, let's go to a month after July. Whatever is available for that particular option. Great. And choose view chain. And what was your strike again? 27 or something like that? 27 strike. Yeah. 27 strike. Okay. So let's scroll down on that. Price window to find a 27 strike. It starts there. Twenty-seven strike. Okay. So it's going for seven dollars and ten cents by nine dollars and ninety cents. Now you're gonna need a calculator. I think you probably have one on your computer, so Find your calculator on your screen, on your uh, in your program there. Great. Okay. So I think you I think you wrote that you have 29 contracts. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. I didn't take the mic off. Yes. Okay. Great. So let's get that calculator back up. Great. All right. So we're looking for, and this was a this was a call, right? This was a call. So we're looking for um, you have the 27 strike looking either at the 28 or the 29 or the 30. Um, it looks like the 30 strike is going to get you seven dollars and fifty cents on the ask. If you want to buy this, you can't buy it for six ten. You can buy it for seven fifty. But you have 29 contracts, so let's do the math here. 
It's uh, $7.50 times um, 29 contracts times $100, 100 just 100 uh, shares. That's going to cost you $21,000. At 750, 21,750 uh, bucks. One thing we didn't write down. Let's go back to your um, your virtual window. What the account is worth today. Let's find out what that's worth today. Okay, so the account is worth twenty four thousand six hundred and forty bucks, right next to the twelve thousand five four hundred in profit. It's worth twenty one twenty four thousand six hundred and forty. You see that? Yes. Okay. And go back to your calculator and your in your price window. Let's go back. We gotta find the right option that's gonna allow us to pull six thousand six thousand. Let's write that down. Twenty-four thousand six hundred and forty. I don't have a calculator handy. Mike, Mike's doing it, and he'll put it in chat. Okay. Oh, brother Mike, brother Mike X is here. Peace, yes, brother. Sir. You just what? can't hear him, though. Yes, sir. Oh, okay. My pen acting okay. crazy. You see, okay? What you say, brother Fox? Twenty-four thousand. Twenty-four thousand six hundred and where is it? I don't know. Oh, 640. Okay. Okay. So let's, what's, what is 0.25 in your account size? 62, 6,250. Okay. Let's push this into your calculator. 24,640 minus 0.25 in, or 6,250 bucks. <coughs> you said 6,250. No, I'm saying 24, 6, 640, 24,640 bucks minus the 62.50, or 0.25 in of your account size. Okay, so we've got to find 29 options in a, at a later month that are going to cost us 18,390 bucks. 18,390 bucks. Let's go back to the price of window and find that option. Okay, so we were looking at the 30 before. Let's go to the 32 option, 32 strikes. That's going to cost us $5.60. So let's go back to your uh, calculator. Save that number in memory. Just hit memory plus. Great. Let's clear that. Let's clear that. Let's just hit cancel now. Great. And let's take this uh, $5 and what was it? $5.60 times 29 contracts times 100 shares of contract. Okay, we're almost there. Maybe go up one number, one, one strike. That was the 32 strike. Let's do the 630, the 31 strike, the 630, 6,030 cents, do that math. There you go, that's the number. That's the, so that's the option you're gonna buy in October. It's gonna cost you 18,270 uh, bucks plus commission. You're gonna still keep 29 contracts that'll still be in the money. You can see they're in the money because they're, you know, um, the, the yellow area behind the, the numbers are indicating what's in the money. You still have 29 contracts, it's still in the trade, but now you pulled out 6,000 and change to buy the newer options you're gonna buy. That's all rolling over is, that's all we're doing. We're either rolling over because the option's expiring, we gotta, just get, we gotta find the same option, same strike at a different month, well, we're rolling over an option because we need to pull some of the profit out to buy more options. That's all we're doing, either or. 
Any questions? Yes, sir. Two questions, actually. First question is, the Delta and open interest, are they the same requirements as as when we're entering the trade the first time around? No, the only requirement is, is that it be in the money. It's got to be an in the money option at this point. Because at this point, you're, you're more than likely to have a Delta. If it's profitable, it's 10% profit benchmark. And you bought this, uh, you bought this Delta between 65 and 85 originally. Nine times, nine and a half times out of 10, it's still going to be between 65 and 85, maybe even more than 85. If it's at least 65, you're good. But it's going to be that because simply because of the fact that it's in the money and it's, it was already in the money and it's already 10% profitable. Yes, sir. Open interest doesn't matter then. Say that again? The open interest requirement doesn't matter then too, right? Not really, no, no. Um, if it has a delta greater than 65, it's going to have, and it's in the money, and it's, um, you know, the, the trade is profitable, it's going to have open interest later if it doesn't have it now. Yes, sir. That's not going to be a concern for us right now, but we're in a trend that's really starting to take off. It's going to, um, it's definitely, you can take a look at it right now if you want. Let's click on that option. But it's going to have, you know, it's going to, it's going to give you what you want in terms of uh, open interest. What would I, oh, click on detail. Click detail, uh-huh. Actually, actually, it's right over there. It's, right, it's already there. It's on the very end. The second to last column, open interest, 170 contracts. And then the delta 60, okay. What's the delta? 69. There you go. Yeah, that's automatically going to be in, in line with what you're looking for because you're already in the money and you're already at the 10% profit benchmark. So it's, it's going to automatically, you bought it in the money, you know, you bought the option originally in the money. Now you're just moving over to, over to a later option at roughly the same strike price roughly. I mean, you bought at 27, now you're getting at 31. It's roughly going to be okay. Yes, sir. My uh, second question, Brother Fox, was their their option had, a, a, I think, a little over $12,000 profit. Now, if that was in the negative, will we still roll over to a new option if their profit was in the red? Well, the only reason you would be rolling over is because it's about to expire, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Well... You would roll over at the loss, whatever the loss was. Keep the loss, keep the loss the same. Just keep that loss exactly where it is. If it's a loss of four thousand dollars, then you're going to find options that you're going to sell for four thousand dollars, um, and then you're going to buy a four thousand dollar loss, and then you're going to um, get another option that's going to cost you four thousand. So basically, it's going to be a wash. Yes, sir. So you paid twenty thousand for the option. Now it's worth sixteen. You're gonna buy a new option worth sixteen. Basically, what is what I'm saying? Hmm. Wow. So, do we go ahead and do this? Do this one now? I would do it over the weekend when the market is closed. Uh, unless this is the, no, this is not the third Friday. Well, it is actually. But this is well, what? This, this is the July option? Yeah, this is the one that we have met the 10% profit benchmark, right? Oh, oh, yeah, right. I'm sorry. You, you, do that, you do all that stuff on the weekends. No changing in the middle of the week. Okay. Everything done on the weekends. Oh, boy, Brother Michael. <laughs> you only exit a losing trade immediately. That's the only time you do something immediately. If it hits your trailing stop or it hits um, your other uh, intermediate stop, your um, your seven and your fifty crossing, then you get out. But and you get out immediately. But other than that, everything else is on the weekends when the market is closed. Okay. Okay. Yeah, is there something we should know? But anything else we should know, brother Fox, when it comes to rolling options? I, I'm just, I'm trying to ask, think of questions. I just can't think of none right now. No, that's it. That's 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 the that's the system that I use. It's programmed, but that's pretty much it. It finds 
If I'm just rolling over because something's expiring, it finds the same option strike price in a later month. And roughly the same amount of money that I sold the profitable option for, I buy a new option at a later month. If, I'm, if I've got to pull money out, then I'm moving up the strike price in the direction of the trend, up if it's an uptrend, down if it's a downtrend. And I'm pulling just enough money out to buy the new options that I have to buy at the 10%, 30%, 60%. Intermediate trailing stop profit benchmarks. Now, now, I'm glad you said. That. I'm glad you said that. Now, if that was practical, pulling the money out, like like if we were taking money out the account, did that is that what you mean? You're not taking money out the account. You're just taking money out of that specific trade, and you're going to use it for a different trade. But you could do that. Oh, yeah, so you could use that to. You could use that same method to pull money out of the account, sure. No, I guess I guess what I'm trying to get at is when would you use the two, like uh, uh, between the two? Which when would you act, uh, do this one as opposed to the second uh, way to roll the option? If the option is expiring because it's oh, it's late, you know, it's, it's, if the option is about to expire, then you use the first method. You just find the same strike price at a later month. If you get to a profit benchmark, then you have to pull money out of the profit. That's how you pull money out of a stock profit trade because unlike commodities, which you get marked to market at the end of every day, profit is only theoretical profit. It's unrealized profit. Not until you totally close out the trade do you actually get the stock profit or the options profit on a stock. Commodities, if a, if a trade goes in the direction of your trend, you're going to get profit every day in your account, actual cash in your account. The options trades don't close out and give you that profit until the trade is done, until you finish that trade. So to finish the trade, to get some of the profit out, you've got to sell something and then buy something else to, put, you know, to buy new options. You understand what I mean? Yes, sir. I have some questions on options that it's not about rolling over. I don't know if I can yes, ask now. Go right ahead. Okay. When you, when you're buying an option, okay, you go for the open, the delta is the most important part that you want to get closest to your sweet spot. Right. Okay. Say for instance, if you're de if you have like an October option and a, December option and the deltas are the same, then what's the next thing that you go by? Do you like, okay, like I had an option where the later month the ask price was greater. Like, say right. for instance, December was 170, but October was 150, and the deltas was right. pretty much the same. Right. Which one do you the go first, with? First, you look for delta. And if delta, you, you have two options. Both of them are, I have a delta between 65 and 85%. The delta with the closest to 75% would be my first choice. But let's say the delta that's closest to 75% is over your limit purchase price, your, your spread risk limit purchase price. So let's say your spread risk limit purchase price is a dollar um 65 dollar 65 is your spread on the stock between your trade setup and the initial stops it's a dollar 65 spread so the october option is selling for a dollar uh, 60 and the december is selling for a dollar 70 well then the, the clear choice is the, is the october option because it's less than your spread price mm -hmm. If they were both under your spread price, then I'm going to I'm going to first look for the option that has the closest um, the closest to 75% sweet spot on the delta. If both of them are exactly the same delta, then I'm going to look for the option that has the highest open interest. If they are exactly the same, which is highly improbable, but if they are, then I'm going to find um, I might just buy both options. I might split the, split the order up and buy. 
I've got to buy 20 contracts. I'm going to buy 10 contracts of the October, 10 contracts of the December. Okay. Because I think my, well, my Delta was maybe 68.689, and the other one was 0.688. Those are are almost identical. Yeah. But the open interest was probably different, though, right? Yes. What was the open interest? One of them was, I can't remember. One of them was a lot more than the other one. That's the one you go with then. Okay. Okay. So they both be, you know, all, all bets being even, all things being even, you go with the one that has whatever is different and in favor of, you know, in favor of the trend. So more open interest, the higher the open interest, the better. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Great question, though. Okay. And one more. Yes, ma'am. When you put in the limit price, when you're putting yes. in the option and you put in your limit. Right. I'm trying to see how to ask this. Do you, if the if the ask price is lower than your spread risk, do you always mm-hmm. just put in your spread risk or do you put in the lower ask price? Great question. Um, that I'll give you guys leeway on. It's up to you. I would, if it was, if the um, ask price is substantially lower than your um, limit price, I mean substantially, maybe 50 cents lower, a dollar lower, you know, something substantial, then I would, I would put in the ask price maybe 5 cents more than that or whatever the, whatever the increment they're allowing you to use, 10 cents, 5 cents. I would put in one, one tick above that, okay. above the ask price. If the ask price is close to your limit price, I would put in the limit price. That's what I do. Okay. Okay. My, and Mike is asking, is so the sweet spot holds priority over open interest? Yes. The delta holds open interest over, the overall delta holds uh, priority over the open interest. Yeah. Delta holds priority over the open interest. And we're trying to get a delta as close as possible to 75%. But again, if neither one of them are at 75%, as Sister Talisha just said, they were both under 70. One was at 68.8, 68.9. Um, they were so close that they were, they were virtually the same. <clears throat> then the open interest comes next. Before delta, before open interest, we still are looking at the spread risk. That's probably first. Spread risk is first, delta second, open interest would be third. You spread, okay, right. Spread risk, second, and then open interest, third. Okay. 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 All right. Was there a question on commodities or something? Or was that Brother uh, Darnell asked me last week? I forget. Probably how to short, but you told me that already. Okay. You just yeah. said to choose the sale option and do everything else the same? Yes, sir. That's it. Brother Michael, did you have any questions? I know you can. I guess. Brother Michael. He said, he said nope. <laughs> <laughs> he said it to me on Skype. Okay. Okay. Great. So did I answer the questions on the options? We're clear on options? We're not clear. I'll probably have to watch the video a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> At least I don't, it's, 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 I'll just reiterate. I'll reiterate. We don't use the... Um, uh, hey, Brother Mike, can you uh, close your uh, microphone again? We don't use the roll button. <clears throat> we don't use the roll button uh, on the right-hand side of the screen. That's just... It's, it's BS. It's convenient, but it's not really what we need to do. Instead, we manually sell the contract we've got, and we buy a later one, a one for a later month. If we're not, we don't need to pull money out of the option, then if we own a July 14 option, strike price 27, then we can just go find a September, October, November, December, or January 2015 option at the same strike price 
same number of contracts. Everything's the same. If we reach the profit benchmark or we have an intermediate trailing stop and we need to buy more options because now we're adding to the trade, we're scaling the trade up, it's time to put on more positions, then we need to pull some of that unrealized profit out of that option. And so at your case, we had a $12,480 profit and we only needed about half of that, $6,200. So in order to do that, we have to go find a later option, ideally a later option. It doesn't have to be a later option. It could be if there's plenty of time left in the current option, then we can just stay in, in July and just find a different strike price in July. So we were doing, doing with the, dealing with the 27 strike, and it was a call for an uptrend, <clears throat> uptrend. Then we found, I think it was the 31 strike, and that 31 strike, we could buy for around $6,200 less than the option we were about to sell in for January, or for July, rather. July 27 strike, um, we could sell that for $24,000 and change. Um, we could sell that for $24,000 and change. That includes the profit that we've made on top of uh, the original purchase. And then we go back and buy the same number of contracts, 29 contracts, for a later for um, for uh, the same month at a different strike, at the 31 strike instead of the 27 strike, and it only cost us 18,000 and change. So we made we pocketed six thousand dollars in profit in real cash. The realized real profit in cash is in our hands now. It's in our bank, it's in our brokerage account. We have real six thousand dollars in cash. $6,200 in cash. That $6,200 in cash, we're going to use it to buy even more contracts. So we'll keep the 29 contracts we have. We'll buy now whatever, another um, 13 contracts, whatever the, whatever the rules tell us to buy. We'll buy the additional contracts with the $6,200 in profit we pulled out of that previous uh, July options contract that is now going to be a... October, or September, or November contract. Same number of contracts, though. Five. And we did all we did it all manually. Yes, ma'am. Would you recommend that one person does this, like uh, Brother Mikael? I think y'all just had one person to roll over options, right? Oh man. Everybody. I think did everybody. Yeah. I think everybody should learn how to do it. Okay. The way we, the way we have it is, uh, in our group is. It's like micromanage. Each person is responsible for a group of trades they put in, and they see it from start to finish. So that includes okay. rolling over. So and the reason for that is so everybody know how to do every aspect of the STS. Then someone comes behind and cleans up, like quality insurance, just to make sure it's being done. It might be myself, or I might have somebody in your group do it, just to have a different set of eyes. But uh, on it, but it, it's best that, in my opinion, that everybody do it so they know how to do every aspect of the STS. Okay. Once you do it the first time, maybe the second time, it becomes clear to what you clear to you what you're doing. You know, you've got uh, a trade that is worth twenty eight twenty four thousand dollars. You need to pull six thousand dollars out. So that means you're going to have now a trade that's $18,000 in value. You really didn't lose any of the money. The money's just being used now. That profit, which is what we always said we were going to do, right? We're going to pull the profit. We're only going to buy. We're only going to add to the trade using the profit generated so far. We've been saying that since week seven. So we take the profit from that $24,000 trade. We only need 6000 of it. And we use some of that profit to buy new options. And so you're just going to sell all of the 29 contracts for 24000 and change. You're going to buy, uh, to pull profit out, you're going to buy um, a different strike at either the same month or later month. If there's not enough time in the current month, you're going to find a contract, an option with a later, later expiration. So maybe this was, let's just say it's, it's only, there's 30 days left in the contract before you have to flip it anyway, before you have to get rid of it. So maybe it's the July contract, and maybe it's not June, but maybe it's the third Friday in May. 
Well, there's only 30 more days left before you have to do something with this July option. Because come the third Friday in June, you gotta, excuse me, you gotta get rid of this option anyway. So if it's the third Friday in May, I might say, you know what? I don't wanna have to do this again in 30 days. So let me go find an option that's gonna expire in September or October. That gives me three months, four months to do what I, you know, to sit back and don't have to move, don't have to do anything with this option again. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take those 29 contracts for July, um, 27 strike, and I'm going to buy a September 31 or October 31 strike, pull out $6,000, and go buy my additional options that I'm supposed to buy at the 10% profit benchmark. Make sense? It will when I review the video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I don't want to lie, but it, it, it'll, it'll come to, you know, while we actually do it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, we almost did it here. We're going to sell. Let, let's go back to that screen you have on, on the, uh, for Options Express there. So, um, which is the option again? It's the pay, right? Pay. Pay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So scroll all the way to the right. It says it's worth twenty four thousand six hundred and forty bucks. Mm hmm. Brother Mike, can you mute yourself? Up, it's I, worth twenty four. It's me. Okay. So it's worth twenty four thousand six hundred and fifty bucks. You're at the ten percent profit benchmark. At the 10% profit benchmark, you have to move up your trailing stop so that you can eliminate 0.25 in of your risk. And if all the rules are valid, you can add to the trade. If all the rules are valid, rule A, B, C, and uh, D. If the rules are valid, you can now add to the trade. And doing the math, whatever the current closing price is for this week and the week is over, and the trailing stop when you moved it, it's going to tell you the spread risk. That spread risk will tell you how many contracts you're going to buy, or how many stocks you're going to buy. The stocks will tell you how many contracts you can buy. So let's say you can, how many contracts you have right now? 2,900 shares, 29 contracts. So let's say at 0.25 in, you're going to get probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 1,200. You're going to be required to get 1,200 shares. So that's 1,200 shares of stock or 12 contracts. You're going to need to buy 12 contracts. 12 contracts. <clears throat> um, at um, 0.25 into your account size, and you said 0.25 into your account size is uh, 6,250 bucks or thereabouts, you need to pull out 6,250 bucks to buy the 12 contracts or thereabouts, 12, 12, 13 contracts, whatever the rules tell you you have to buy. In order to, you know, you, you've got 12,480 bucks in profit, you only need to use half of that profit to pull out some of your, you know, to, to buy the new options. You've got 12480 bucks in profit on this trade. You need 6250 bucks, almost half, almost half. Um, what's your, what's your point two five then, 6240 or 6250? 50. 50. Okay. So... went out brother fast i can't hear you i don't know if you can hear him, brother Mikael. I, I i can't hear him either I, I, i'm here though i think brother fox got kicked out no yeah he's still on we just wait for him to come back we don't hear you brother fox if you can hear us can you hear us? Can you type? Type in, yeah, type in the uh, thingamajiggy. Maybe he got kicked out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there 
Gray is. He said he think he lost connection. Okay. <laughs> Mike is stupid. <laughs> Yeah, I'll get it. I'll probably definitely get it better once I actually do it. Okay. Uh, I guess you can hear me now because I can hear you. Yes. Yes, sir. Sorry about that. I'm on a Bluetooth headset and disconnected for some reason. All right, um, yeah, so I was just basically saying that you've got to pull out half your profit, and the only way to do that, because this is, that profit is locked in, that $12,400 in profit, it's locked into the trade until you do something, and you can only do, the only thing you can do is sell what you have to pull that profit out. So if you were to sell this option, this, this uh, pay July 14, 27 strike call, you were to sell it, just get rid of it now, you would realize the 12480 bucks in profit. It would be yours. Until you sell that option, it's, 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 uh, it's locked in there, and you can't actually get it. Now, if you were trading commodities, the opposite would be the case. <clears throat> at the end of every trading day, <clears throat> at the end of every trading day, you would get your profit put into your account as cash, and you could do with it as you please. Pull it out, you know, go spend it, Go shopping, whatever. When it comes to options on stocks and ETFs, the profit is what's called unrealized profit. You don't realize the profit until you do something with that option that is now profitable. You have to sell it, basically, to pull that option, to, to gain, to get access to that option, which is what you have to do to, um, which is what you're going to have to do to buy more options at the 10% profit benchmark. You're going to have to sell that option. I'm trying to get water out of this machine here. You're going to have to sell that option to get the profit out. But you're not going to, like, just abandon the trade. You're going to, you know, you've you got 29 contracts. You're going to continue owning 29 contracts just at a later month or at a different strike price, which will allow you, once you've sold it, will allow you to pull some of that profit out. And then you're going to take all that $12,480 in profit and you're going to, and plus the original 0.5 in you used, and you're going to go buy another option at a later time or a different strike price that's going to cost you <clears throat> not $24,000 in change, but $18,000 in change, which will allow you to pull out your $6,000 to go and buy those other options at the 10% profit benchmark. Did I lose everybody? Yes. Yeah. Okay. No, I, 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 I'm just listening. Okay. And, and it makes sense, Brother Five. You know, this is one we're going to be studying, you know. So, yes, sir. Uh, but it does make sense. And I, I was trying, I had a question at the top of my tongue. I, I'll, I'll wait till it comes back because I, I lost my train of thought. Well, I'm done. If you guys, um, unless you guys have other questions, I'm done. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Have then, to, uh, you just have to. You just have to do it a couple of times. You'll see it works. How it works, and you know it'll make sense to you. Okay, brother Mikael. Mikael, you see what brother Michael said? I just responded to her. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you, brother Fox. For your Thank time. you. I yes, appreciate sir. both of you, all, all three of you. And good to hear your voice, Sister Talisha. I haven't heard your voice in, in what looks like ages. 
Yes, I, I was I was I was geek. I'm a trader geek. So when Brother Michael asked me, I was I was excited. <laughs> good, good. Okay. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. We all trader geeks out there. You see them names are popping up all over the place. That's it. We're on the move here, family. We're on the move. We're creating a move here. Well, y'all have a good one. All right, now. Good, family. Ah. All right, brother. All right, take care. Peace. All right, peace.